and uh, I, I love hearing the reaction from people when we um, play this, the oohs and the ooh and the oh. <laughs> like, the, we've all got boundaries, right? Yeah, and that video kind of pushes some of us beyond our boundaries of comfort and that's actually a good thing. Now, this is probably the only presentation uh, where I'm going to say it's okay to have your mobile phone on and to be on Facebook, because that's kind of the point, you know? Um, but thanks for having me. Um, and I kind of jumped ahead. This is me. Uh, I, I serve at Crossway. I'm a pastor at Crossway. As um, I was introduced, I've worked 20 years in the creative industry and um, I love social media, and uh, I, I do heaps of things across where I look after our digital presence, look after our creative video, look after the brand of who we are as a church, um, because let me tell you, uh, if you're a church leader here, your church has a brand, whether you like it or not. Uh, people are talking about you online, whether you like it or not. Uh, the good thing about social media is that you can actually listen to what they are saying. So I blog about all things social media and communications for church leaders, for volunteers, at uh, stevefogg.com, and um, there's some um, great resources there for you. So one of, one of the interesting things in that video uh, is really, you know, what happens in church shouldn't stay in church. And, uh, you know, they said what happens uh, in Vegas, you know, stays on Facebook, stays on Twitter, and on YouTube. But this is uh, just something I've noticed about church life, that we go to church on a Sunday and we have a great experience, um, but often uh, our friends and our families and our networks don't actually know that we go to church. And if you're an introvert like me, and yes, I'm an introvert, let me tell you, so standing up here is, is, freaks me out sometimes. Um, but to be able to share our faith, um, one of the things I've noticed about social media is that we can actually share our faith on social media. And uh, this afternoon, I'm just going to give you some tips about how you can do that. But really, what happens in church should not stay in church. So if in your church service, you're saying, please switch off your phones, turn them off, get rid of them, don't do that. Encourage your congregations to switch on their phone to get onto Facebook, to share uh, the life of the church, the community of God with uh, the, their own networks, with their own families and with their own friends. Like I said, I, I've worked in the creative industry and one of the things uh, on a Monday morning would be our Monday morning latte. And you know, we had beautiful coffee machines and all that sort of stuff, but about 10.30, um, we would all go have a cup of coffee and we'd talk about what we did on the weekend. Has anyone been there? You know, you say, well, you know, went to the football, you know, my team lost last night, Geelong. But, you know, it'd be sort of talking about that sort of stuff. And uh, with social media, your friends uh, can see what you're doing on the weekend already. That water cooler conversation, if you like, has actually been put online, you know? So often people talk about, hey, I saw what you did on the weekend. You went up to the Dandenongs to a thousand steps. Oh, I did that last week, you know? It's the same for church. Hey, I saw what you're doing in church. Um, what was that about? What's that about, you know? Um, I'm from England, so you can probably tell by my accent, and I've got lots of friends who aren't really friends. <laughs> They're not my friends. They're my acquaintances, okay? So social media is like a party, right? It's a big room full of people, and not everyone on social media is going to be your friend. They're going to be an acquaintance. But if you can treat social media like a party where you're going to have a conversation here and going to have a conversation here. And I remember being on social media one day and uh, I had a friend from England uh, and, you know, from school. So a guy I used to hang out with at school and this guy, uh, if you look at him, you'll probably run a mile now. Uh, he looks like um, one of those bouncer guys, sort of big guy, wears a hoodie. He looks really, really serious, but he's a lovely, sweet guy. Uh, doesn't know Jesus. And, uh, you know, here I am in Australia. Here he is in England, 20,000 kilometers apart. Yet with social media, what happens in church doesn't stay in church. It goes to England. Now, it just so happened that I 
was travelling to England and uh, we, we got in a conversation where, uh, where we said, hey, let's meet up and I can tell you more about this bloke, Jesus. That would never have happened without social media. Never have happened. I would never have even seen this guy again, probably, unless I passed him in the supermarket in the village where I came from. It's an incredible asset for the church. It's an incredible asset for church leaders. Social media is awesome. God uses the cultural meeting places of the time to spread the good news. And social media is a cultural meeting place. Whatever you think about it, people are there already. So if we look in Acts, you know, Paul, in Acts 17, Paul's kind of doing a bit of a sweep in his missionary journey, and he arrives in Athens, and he goes to a key influencer meeting place where all the big decisions are made. Social media is like that in many ways. It's a place where common minds come together. It's a place where you can come and have a chat about, you know, the that laughing cat video or something superficial like that or have the most deeping, meaningful conversation about something that's terrible going on in your life. And I've seen it all on Facebook. And it's just incredible. It's incredible. You know, it's, God uses these landscapes uh, for his good. And it's our choice whether we actually want to join in with him or not. Social media is the most significant cultural revolution since the printed press. So uh, it's this invisible undercurrent that's changing our society. If you see the news reports uh, now, you'll hear them talk about, you know, on Twitter or on Facebook, um, the commentary, the places of influence are actually coming from social media. You know, we had the oral tradition of uh, the time of Jesus where the story of Jesus would be passed down orally through the generations. And then, you know, the printing revolution came. And then, you know, TV and radio, and that, they all sweep through. And social media is just that next step in the journey. But it's a very profound step in the journey. Something seismic has changed. And it's who holds the keys to the power. And, and you talked about the keys to the power. The media industry is one of those keys to the power. And they hold um, this very um, close to their chest. And if you're a church uh, or a Christian organization and you've ever tried to get a story of what your church is doing out there, and I, let me tell you, I've done it many times, these guys hold that very, very tightly. And they don't give you a lot of space unless, unless it's an absolutely compelling story. Um, but the thing about social media is that that has changed. The dynamics of that have meant that you can actually go around these power brokers, these kind of cultural bouncers, if you like. Um, so if this is church, church has a message that it wants to get to an audience out there. That's our mission. Yeah, that's the mission of the church is to reach our city and our nation and nations for Jesus. Okay, but here's this thing. It's called the media, and it stops us often. Now you know we can do that through our social, uh, literal social networks of face-to-face -face parties, relational stuff like that. But what happens when we want to broadcast these messages? It comes back. We reach a point uh, where we can't get our message out there. Uh, this is what social media does. So here's the church. Here's our message. Here's our target audience. Here's the media. The wall, the gate has shrunk. Social media allows us to connect with our audience directly. And I, I want to show you just a, a, a few uh, analytics. And um, analytics are so important in the world of digital uh, because they are the truth tellers. And they tell you whether you're being effective or not. And mainstream communication, you know, Christian TV, has for ages been trying to get on, you know, early morning TV, you know, five o'clock in the morning, you'll see different programs on there. And that we, we work really, really hard to get 
um, our product, um, our services into those free-to-air experiences. And that's a really, really good thing, but the times have changed. Uh, free-to-air broadcasters don't actually have to do that now by law. Uh, the culture's shifted again, and society shifted again and said, we're actually not that interested in it. But what social media does, it allows us to get our message uh, straight to our audience. We don't need the Channel 9s of the world anymore. We don't need the Channel 7s anymore. We don't need radio anymore. If I want to reach all of you in this room right now via social media, I can do it. I can target 13 million Australians on, on Facebook, and I can put my brand in front of your face. Now, what you do with that is a completely different question because, you know, I can be an absolute... Uh, idiot and put the wrong message in front of you, but I have the potential, if I have the wallet, uh, to do that on Facebook. Uh, it's absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So I just want to share a little bit of our story. Um, this is our Facebook analytics from a couple of years ago, and it, it's really dry, it's really, really boring, but it's fantastic. What I love about this is, um, so they don't show you these analytics anymore. This is why it's from so far ago. But you'll see on the left-hand side, it says total likes. So that's our page at the time. It had 1,200 likes. Now, here's the killer analytic. Okay? So friends who follow us on Facebook, that next ring out. Okay? So that's one friend removed. You know, you've heard of six degrees of separation. Well, this is one degree of separation. Okay, 1,198 people. The next ring out is 349,000 people. Imagine, imagine what your church could do speaking to that audience. Imagine that. Imagine the message. What would you say to them? What would your voice be to that audience? You know, Paul in Acts um, went to speak into the synagogues. He went to speak to the, you know, the marketplaces. Uh, he went to the places of influence. Social media is that on a massive, massive scale. Uh, this was us a couple of years later on Facebook. We've now grown to 7,200 likes. Friends of fans, 2,734,000. Now, that's fantastic. That's a big slab of the mainly Australian culture that we can directly influence if we want. But we have to be really, really smart about what we put in front of them. You know, that, that is just um, one of the biggest questions as churches we have to grapple with. If we're going to put ourselves in someone's timeline, what is that message going to be? So, uh, you know, if you've got a, a deep wallet, you can do that. It's not that hard. On one weekend, uh, about uh, two years ago, I reached 144,000 people in, in, in three hours. It's not that hard. And uh, it's just about the size of your wallet, really, to be honest with you. And working out how to use Facebook and, you know, broadcast to them. It's not that hard, but what's import more important is what is the message that you're putting in front of them. Um, now, you know, church leaders love stats, and, um, you know, so we celebrated that stat of, woo, you know, 100,000 people, ah, yeah. <coughs> As I look back on the message, I went, yeah, I probably stuffed that one up, actually. We only spent a couple hundred dollars doing it, but I reckon we really stuffed that up. Um, so th there's an opportunity in front of us now, uh, and it's a short window. Our, our window... Um, to do this is getting uh, tighter and tighter and tighter. It's Facebook uh, and all of these social networks are moving from startups where everything is free, everything is possible. They're now um, all done their IPOs. They're all now in the business of making money. Okay, so the landscape is changing. But I just want to rewind a few years and, and just to give you a vivid example of, of the the change, the change is amazing. Now, I love um, seeing different popes get inaugurated. You know, the, the scene in the Vatican Square, 
you know, the faithful there, they're waiting for the white or the black smoke or whatever to, to happen. And that's St. Peter's Square, I think. And, and just down here, can you see that amazing person with a flip phone? I wanted to be one of those people with those colored flip phones. I had a little Nokia with a black and white screen and that game Snake <laughs> was just the best game ever. You know, I used to sit at the train station going, oh, ours, it's ours. I was always jealous of the people that had those flip screens because they could take photos on these things. Amazing. 2005, that's Pope Ratzinger, um, uh, his inauguration. So, wow, you know. Now, now, here's the thing, you know, some of them are just taking photos. But, here's the thing, they're sharing with their 160 average friends. Now, many, many more will have even more friends. So, if you think about it, so we, we, we do some analytics, um, you know, if every one of here has 150 friends, how many people do we reach? Whatever size community you are, you have an ability to reach far more people than you ever have done. So when you gather together, as these faithful are gathering together, don't tell them to switch off their mobile phone. Tell them to get their phone out. Tell them to take a photo of the worship. Sure. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, turn off the flashes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But just get them. Get it. Get your audiences engaged with you. People love sharing good content. And uh, that's one of the things that I've noticed is that um, uh, as a church, uh, we are a lot more engaged uh, with, so as church audiences, we're a lot more engaged with social media than any of our audience. So there was a recent poll in America where they did a lot of analytics around who would have the most loyal and fervent followers in social media, and it was American church leaders. Uh, they had the most engaged audience, so the most engaged base of everybody. So if they wanted to start a movement, man, they just had to get on social media, and they knew and know what power to, to, to use it in a good way uh, for social media provides them. But I love that photo. It kind of sums up the social media journey for me. and. Uh, you know, so next time you have a church service, just invite your congregation because the gospel is fire and social media is the gasoline. It just makes it go woof. And uh, I've tweeted this quote. This quote's uh, from a guy called Jay Beer. And uh, he, you know, just the insight of that, that we all have this message, this amazing message of the gospel. And, you know, it spreads slowly. So as I read the scriptures and Jesus' fame, um, went out ahead of him through word of mouth, through people who interacted, you know, and it says, and they, I was reading the scripture yesterday, it said, all of Syria had heard of him because of the word of mouth. And it traveled out slowly over those months. Social media has the ability for your community through the digital word of mouth to know so much more about your community so much more quicker uh, than it happened in Jesus' time. So the message remains the same. Uh, the way we tell the stories changes. And um, what that means is that it's no longer social media. If you use social media well, it's not about just you broadcasting to the world for your church, your Facebook page or whatever. It's about, um, it's about a community. So it's not about the story your church tells. It's about how your church becomes a part of your community story. And... Um, what that means is that uh, you're creating content that your community can buy into. So um, on one practical level, that can be a quotable quote from your Sunday sermon. So uh, preachers work really hard on getting a quotable quote into 140 characters. Because it'll travel, let me tell you, I've seen it. Just our church, when we put a, 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 a quote up from a Sunday service, man, these things just go woof, like this. And so just work really, really hard um, because your, your story then becomes part of the community story. And you know, when your congregation's buying in 
to what you have to say and what the gospel says, and then their friends hear about it, and then they tend to have conversations around faith and what, what you know, you shared that, I didn't like that, or you shared that, or I actually really engaged with that. Um, and it also provides, you know, when your, fr- your congregations are inviting people to church, actually, you know what? Their friends have already heard of you. That leap of trust, which everyone takes, I've done it, I invite my friends to church and it's a bit of a <gasps> moment, but they've heard of Crossway. That leap is just a little bit smaller because they've kind of seen a little bit what we're about. We're not kind of all weird, you know, it seems like normal people are there. If Facebook is the third biggest country, where are the digital missionaries? So here, here's the thing. We invest so much money into uh, putting Bibles together for China. We s- invest so much money and time in sending missionaries to countries to learn languages, to learn cultures, and it's all good. I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, right? So hear me really clear there. I think we should do that. But alongside that, there are these digital countries like Facebook, like Google+, like Twitter, like YouTube. These are, these are massive, massive digital properties and countries. Where are the digital missionaries? You know, uh, about six months ago, I had this uh, Indonesian guy come and talk to me at church. I didn't know him from a bar of soap. And he just said, oh, can we have a coffee and catch up? I went, yeah, yeah. I went, I'm interested in social media and, you know. I went, yeah, yeah. So here I am, the expert expecting to tell him a few things and he just said look I've been on YouTube and I'm from Indonesia and I've been doing these audio um, kind of sermon things really and I've got these networks in Indonesia and I'm sp- just been sending links to them and um, I've got this one particular uh, episode a million people have seen it a million people have seen this. Now, now here's the thing. He's connecting with Muslims. A Muslim. So he's speaking the language they understand from a, from a missionary point of view. I could never put anything together that's going to resonate with this community in Indonesia because culturally I'm just not there. Uh, but he's placed, God's placed this individual on a very basic level. It's not polished at all, let me tell you. Uh, but a million people have interacted with him. Amazing, and it's a direct gospel appeal. It reminds me, you know, when Peter's talking to the Jewish people just after Acts two, and he's telling them all the, you know, the bad stuff that they've done, and and then thousands respond. And here's this humble man sitting in front of me. It's done that in exactly the same way, but he's done it digitally. So amazing, so amazing. Where are your digital missionaries? You will have people in your congregations who love social media, and they're probably about 17, 16, 15, but they've got hundreds of friends. And for them, they, un- they understand just the way they're wired that um, social media really is just a big party, and p- you know, they engage about superficial stuff. Swoop them up. Swoop them up. Give them your social media presence. Now you need to be careful, you know, you need to think about that a little bit, but give it into the hands of the digital natives. Um, And, you know, don't try and control it. It's not a message to be controlled. It's a movement to be unleashed. And these guys will have the networks and they will have the social placing in their own community to spread your message much further than you will ever have. So talked a little bit about the change uh, in the social media. So the ecosystems are changing. So Facebook has just gone through a, you know, a small IPO and uh, they, you know, they've raised billions of dollars. Well, now these investors want a return on their investment. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit, just a, one example in a moment about how you can take advantage of that. But basically, they're wanting to, get, they're wanting to commercialize these networks. Uh, and they want you to pay to get access to it. So in some way, they're becoming those new media barons of the 21st century. 
and uh, I think governments recognise that, and um, you know, so they're going to treat them with kid gloves accordingly. But you know, I if you're a, a church leader here and you put money into your sound system in the auditorium because you want to amplify your voice to the 300 people who are all 100 people or 1,000 people who are sitting in your congregation, social media is no different. Uh, and yet, for some reason, we have this disconnection that the audience out there aren't worth investing money into. And I, I'd just challenge you and say, that audience out there is our mission field, and it is, they are worth investing into. So start planning, start budgeting. I, I saw this coming about two years ago, and I put a line item in my budget, social media, which caused all sorts of fun questions to come back to me. Um, but my church supported me and said, yep, go for it. And we've had some fun stuff, some stuff up, some successes along the way. And I'll share more about that this afternoon. <coughs> so we talked really about kind of the church broadcasting out a little bit. Um, but really, social media isn't about mass, amassing a crowd. You can reach. It's about creating a community. And um, this organization, <laughs> Thank You Water, has done this so, so well. Um, amazing. So, uh, d anyone know their story? Yeah? So, so you know, they, they went to 7-Eleven um, a couple of years ago and basically used social media as an advocate tool to convince 7-Eleven to stock their water. So they use their credibility online in the social space to advocate for someone to sell their product, basically. Amazing. It was such a success that 7-Eleven stopped stocking their own house brand of water. And they just, this is their house brand of water now in every 7-Eleven. It's amazing. Through the power of social media. Now, you know, they didn't march in the street with placards. They could have, but probably wouldn't have got any coverage at all. They just activated their base and said, come and advocate for us to place into 7-Eleven. And then, more recently, they've done the same with Coles and Woolworths, and they've changed their positioning a little bit. They're, they're now Thank You, instead of Thank You Water, and they do cereals and all sorts of really, really good stuff, which I'm sure, um, is it Dan? We'll talk about tomorrow. Yeah. Yep. Um, but again, just using the power of a movement, the, the, the power of their community for social good, amazing, and the church can do that. We can do that. We've got the most activated, fervent uh, community who are passionate about the cause of Jesus Christ. Uh, we're much more activated than most of society. And um, I just want to move into a, 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 a practical example. Um, so often we go into broadcast mode. We, we tell people what we want them to know. We tell them about our next event. We, we um, say, come along to this, buy this book. Uh, buy this DVD, um, as good as they are, um, but what would happen if we just showed them something? And I think this is one of the successes of these guys. They've showed them a vision of a restored future. And uh, th this is our uh, Easter video. And there's just lots of analytics here, but um, uh, 10,000 people saw it. Um, and uh, so we, we created this, we played it in our auditorium. Um, we invested um, in putting this into Facebook in a really good, high-quality format, and then paying Facebook for our own audience to see it. Now, that sounds a bit weird, I know, but if you know anything about Facebook, is that for brands and for nonprofits, they're winding back what influence you can actually have. It's the pay-to-play time. And so we're paying for our own audience to see it, because we believe what we have to show is worth showing, and we believe our audience will spread the message for us. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. So to, if you can imagine, so this is on Facebook. When we put something out, only the first two rows will ever see it. That's what Facebook does. It limits your influence now. And then by next year, it's going to be the first row. that are turning down that volume of your amplification. So now what we have to do, we have to give them our credit card, and then they go, okay, we'll turn it back up for you. And woof, off it goes. To our existing audience, this isn't a new audience, 
just to our existing audience. But we know our existing audience um, are engaged and supporters and want to share what we're doing. So, you know, this has got a couple of hundred likes. So that means it's spreading to their audience and their networks. Uh, it's got comments, it's got shares. Um, it had, um, you know, it was played 644 times. Um, you know, people linked through to our website 24 times. Um, and this, this is the video. it in our auditorium to encourage our congregation just to invite their friends. Um, but we put that out into all of our networks through email, through social media, because we we're really proud of what was created there. We thought it was a really great expression of what Easter was about uh, in, a, in a fresh way. And our congregations then became our social storytellers. So um, they did this through sharing and liking and engaging with it. So really the goal uh, is, is not necessarily just to blast out and say, okay, we want to reach three million people today, blast. The, the goal, if you're smart about social media, is to, to engage your existing audience, to grow that as well, but to help them become your storytellers on your behalf. And I love that in the, in the Gospels, you know, where Jesus' fame spread. Uh, it's the same thing, just in a different way. So in Acts, it's the same thing, you know, just Paul would go out and, you know, he'd be preaching, teaching, people would come to Christ, churches would be formed out of these synagogues, and, and again, the, it just this movement spread and spread and spread. Um, so how do you do that? How do you encourage a congregation to do that? Well, uh, this is just a short video, this is just one way, but again, just, you can just tell them as well. Uh, we we want to communicate through the use of... Um, video, so this is just one example, and hopefully there's some music to it. So that's just one example, but you, you, there's all sorts of ways just to go, hey, share the experience. Because that's all we're all about, just sharing what we're doing. We're not pushing anything, we're just sharing the message. And uh, that's it for me today. I, I, and I just want to say thank you for having me. And if you've got any questions or queries, I'm here all day. I'd love just to spend some time um, investing into you uh, as you've given me the privilege of sharing with you today. So thanks. Thank you.